So also thanks to the meeting organizer for allowing me this great opportunity to show uh, our work. My research is focused on single cell and spatial analysis of liver cancer. Today I'm going to talk about how we uh, understand tumor heterogeneity and the tumor evolution in liver cancer using uh, single cell approaches. Uh, liver cancer is one of the leading cancer killers worldwide. It is the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in males and the fifth in females. Uh, in, uh, in the USA, when we look at the uh, changes in five years survival rates across cancer types from 1970s to around 2010, there's overall an increase of survival rates for most of our cancer types. However, liver cancer has very low five year survival rates of less than 20%, that will be higher than pancreas cancer. Uh, liver cancer is a very complex disease. It mainly comprises two clinical subtypes, hepatocellular carcinoma, HCC, and cholangial carcinoma, CCA. Each clinical subtype further consists of different molecular subtypes determined by using molecular features. Uh, while the determination of molecular features is based, uh, is based on the tumors at the time point of tissue collection, liver cancer is a dynamic disease with constantly evolution of tumor cells uh, in maintaining their continuous survival. Selective pressures from tumor microenvironments, such as nutrients and space, allow some subcones to expand while others become extinct or remain dormant. Uh, this evolution process of cancer is driven by selective favorable phenotypes for survival fitness in a tumor ecosystem. As such, the molecular um, landscape of liver cancer is highly complicated, posing a great challenge for liver cancer treatment. Uh, thus, the management of liver cancer is very complex. One thing I would like to point out is that over 80% of HCC patients are not eligible for curable treatment, such as ablation, resection, or transplantation. In addition, the overall survival of liver cancer patients is very poor, especially for those with advanced stage of disease. Uh, therefore, there's a crucial need to understand the complex tumor cell landscape of liver cancer to improve liver cancer interventions. The question is how do we better characterize the complex tumor cell landscape to determine the heterogeneous tumor cell population, the major cell types, the cell cell interactions, as well as the spatial relationships of different cells. Single cell analysis has been demonstrated to have a sufficient resolution to determine tumor cell communities. Uh, the single cell field has been uh, advanced extremely fast in recent 10 years, from its primitive to a relatively mature stage. Uh, SmartSeq2 is a commonly used platform to generate full length single cell transcriptomes, and uh, Tenex Genomics is commonly used in generating three prime or five prime single cell data to investigate tens of thousands of cells from a number of tissues. This advances in single cell technology allows us to determine the transcriptomic landscape of tumor cell communities and may also offer insights into the collective behaviors and interface among tumor cells and the stroma cells, as well as a mechanistic understanding of tumor evolution. Uh, to study the tumor cell landscape in liver cancer, we collected called tumor biopsies from HCC or ICC patients who were enrolled at the NIH Clinical Center uh, under the liver moonshot program for immune checkpoint inhibition clinical trials. Tissues were cut into small pieces and were immediately transferred for dissociation to prepare for the single cell suspension. Uh, Ten exogenomics platform was applied for library sequencing, and we use Illumina HiSeq system for CDNA library sequencing. Uh, in total, there are 19 patients in this cohort, including 9 HCC patients and 10 CCA patients. Most samples were collected at baseline, while some of the samples were collected from patients after treatment with immunotherapy. Uh, with the derived single cells, we separated malignant cells and non-malignant cells by inferring large scale chromosomal coding number variations from the transcriptome. We found non-malignant cells were mainly grouped according to their cell types as annotated as using cell lineage specific marker genes to T cells, B cells, macrophage, and the cellular cells, fibroblasts, and the hematontic progenitor cells. In contrast, the malignant cells from the patient-specific clusters indicating intertumor homogeneity. Noticeably, tumor cells within a tumor differ in their transcriptomic profiles, 
showing evidence of uh, intergenic homogeneity. The question is how tumor cells are different from one another within a tumor. Uh, is it a situation of very low degree of homogeneity with one or two clones, or high degree of homogeneity with a highly mixed heterogeneous tumor cell population? And the following questions would be that is the degree of heterogeneity associated with patient prognosis, and whether strongly strong cells behave differently between low diversity and high diversity tumors? I first studied intratumor homogeneity by constructing the single cell trajectory of each tumor. Here each dot represents a single cell, and the cells are colored by using the average expression of 10 liver cancer related stainless genes. Uh, in this example, OSSA case, the single cell trajectory between stem like cells and well differentiated AK cells was revealed. I also studied intratumor homogeneity by using correlation analysis of all malignant cells. Here, each pixel in the heat map represents the pairwise correlation of two malignant cells. Uh, red means high correlation and blue stands for low correlation. In some of the tumors, for example, this one, there's a relatively homogeneous tumor cell population because the tumor cells are very well correlated with each other. In others, for example, this one, there's a relatively heterogeneous tumor cell population with the tumor cells less likely to be correlated with each other. These routes indicate that the degree of intratumor homogeneity varies among tumors. To determine the level of intratumor homogeneity, I applied principal components analysis to project the tumor cells into the eigenvector space in order to avoid noise and capture major information. Uh, then diverse scale is calculated based on the principal components. Tumor samples were divided into high diversity and low diversity group based on the median value of diversity scale. Uh, remarkably, the prognosis of patients from diverse, high diversity group was significantly poorer than those from the low diversity group. This was further validated using an additional set of sequentially enrolled patients. It's interesting to know that when I analyzed HCC patients and CSA patients separately, it's apparent that ICCA has much higher diversity score than HCC. When these cases were divided based on their diversity score into low diversity, medium diversity, and high diversity group, there's a significant trend linking an increased transcriptomic diversity to patients' outcome. This finding, uh, findings indicate that tumor cell biodiversity is associated with the overall survival of liver cancer patients. When looking at non malignant cells, I observed non malignant cells derived from the high diversity tumors, the uh, red dots, and the low diversity tumors, the dark gray dots, differ in their transcriptomic profiles. And the difference is further evident when individual cell types was analyzed. Then I thought to determine whether the high diversity tumors they could secrete some cellular factors that could induce tumor microenvironmental reprogramming. I developed a strategy to search for cytokines or growth factors that were found upstream of at least three of the four cell types evaluated. I further selected genes that were differentially expressed in high diversity and low diversity tumors. Based on this strategy, I found the vascular and the cellular growth factor A, BGFA, was a top candidate responsible for tumor microenvironmental reprogramming. Consistently, VEGFA was mainly expressed in malignant cells rather than non malignant cells. And the expression is much higher in high diversity tumors than low diversity tumors. We further validated the expression of VEGFA in low diversity and high diversity tumors using immunohistochemistry analysis. The increased VEGFA expression is in parallel with the elevated level of HIPAA and hypoxia signaling. I also investigated VGFA downstream signaling as its function surrogate in non malignant cells. We found that VGFA function uh, surrogate genes could discriminate endothelial cells, macrophage, fibroblast, but not T cells. The role of VGF in tumor androgenesis has been very well documented. Uh, VGF has multiple functions in the tumor microenvironment. Except for androgenesis and vascular permeability, 
it may also act in an autoquine manner to promote de differentiation and EMD phenotype to enhance tumor cell invasion and survival. In addition, it may function as a chemo attracting to recruit regulatory T cells to inhibit anti tumor immune response, and may also affect fibroblasts to contribute to tumor growth. Taken together, this example demonstrates that high diversity malignant cells may produce more VGF, which may in turn reprogram the surrounding stroma cells to affect uh, patient prognosis. Uh, in parallel with Starry's iconic evolution solution engine tree, Peter Noyle proposed the clonal evolution model of tumor cell population in 1976. Their acquired genetic lability permits stepwise selection of variant sublines and other lines tumor progresses. Tumor cells compete for resources and spe uh, spe space, leading to a constant pressure of evolution selection and adaption to the tumor microenvironment. This evolution process of cancer is driven by selecting variable phenotypes in terms of their fitness and survival in a tumor ecosystem. However, not all semantic genetic alterations can induce a recognizable phenotypic change, and even fewer can provide a fitness advantage. Traditionally, tumor clonality is modeled uh, relying on semantic alterations specific to tumor cells to construct the evolution tree. This is because cancer is a genetic disease. However, most of the cancer-related genetic alterations are passenger events with no phenotypic positives. Consistently, a recent study has nicely demonstrated cell states during non-cancer evolution in mice. They performed both single-cell RNA sequencing and single-cell DNA sequencing. What they found uh, was that the uh, transcriptomic uh, landscape determined by using single-cell RNA RNA sequencing arise largely independent of all the genetic variations. In the uh, figures, you will find that the five subtones determined by using single cell DNA sequencing spread all over the place on the transcriptomic landscape of the 12 transcriptomic clusters. Thus, we argue that instead of using the semantic alteration based evolution tree, it might be better to model tumor evolution by tumor function clonality based tree to reflect tumor biology. To model tumor cell function clonality and its evolution, we perform single cell RNA sequencing of tumor samples collected at baseline and uh, different follow-up time points during treatment. This study includes 25 HCC patients and 12 ICC patients with different etiologies. In total, we obtained about 17,000 malignant cells and about 40,000 40, non-malignant cells. Uh, in this testing plot is that represents a single cell. Uh, we found malignant cells from the patient-specific cluster indicate the intertumor homogeneity, and the cells with the uh, in a uh, tumor sample differ in their transcriptomic profiles, showing evidence of intertumor homogeneity, which is consistent with our previous findings. And in contrast, non-malignant cells were mainly grouped according to their cell types as annotated as T cells, B cells, macrophage, etc. Uh, to study tumor functional clonality in malignant cells, I developed an algorithm to define tumor cell states in order to reflect tumor functional clonality. This is based on the concept that tumor cells are organized in a hierarchical manner. Uh, this algorithm is mainly composed of five modules including cell sampling to avoid unbalanced cell number, the use of consensus classroom method to identify cells with similar transcriptome, the implementation of a stability test, the using of neighboring similarity search to map all corresponding tumor cells, and then a repeat of the whole process for 100 iterations to obtain stable function tumor cell clones to link to each tumor. Uh, with the direct clones, I constructed a tumor branch architecture based on hierarchical classroom methods. Uh, in this phylogenetic tree, each leaf represents a tumor functional clone. We found three major branches in the phylogenetic tree and referred the branches using branch index as branch A, branch B, and branch C. All the tumors in branch A are from HCC cases, while branch B and branch C contain tumors from both HCC and ICCA. 
Uh, interestingly, patients whose tumor had a high clot number had a much shorter survival than patients with a lower clot number, suggesting a link of tumor clonality and patient prognosis. Uh, in addition, uh, it's uh, 15 minutes. Oh, perfect time. Thank you. Uh, in addition, patients from branch B C had a much aggravated survival than patients from branch A. Uh, to avoid the confounding factors of histological subtypes of HCC and the ICSA, they also performed survival analysis of HCC patients separately. Consistently, a significant difference in overall survival between branch A and branch B C was observed. To identify common regulators of tumor branch evolution, I developed a strategy to search for conserved genes of different branches. It is written that a gene that is elevated in uh, tumor cells and expressed uh, ubiquitously at sample or branch level is likely to drive in the uh, function of the corresponding sample branch. This strategy revealed SPP1 among the top of the conserved genes in branch B and branch C. Consistently, SPP1 is mainly expressed in malignant cells rather than non malignant cells, and the expression is much higher in branch B, C than branch A. To determine tumor function, uh, tumor evolution in response to treatment, I performed hierarchical analysis and uh, trajectory analysis of tumor functional clones and the TCN analysis of the whole tumor ecosystem. This example is a non responder patient treated with anti PBL1 and anti CBLA4 drugs. Uh, this non responder has a polarized tumor cell population and as well as tumor ecosystem. For one of the non uh, responders with HCC patient, also treated with anti pbl one and anti cdla 4 drugs. The tumor landscape over a period of 97 weeks uh, is relatively stable. The cells of the tumor ecosystem very well mix from different time points. Striking the SPP1 was significantly elevated in malignant cells after treatment with immunotherapy, and no significant changes was observed from the uh, responder for the highlighting the role of SPP1 in tumor evolution. In summary of what I discussed, HCC and ICCA have a varying degree of molecular um, diversity. We also found that tumor um, molecular diversity and tumor functional clinality are linked to patient outcomes. Tumor-derived VHF may drive the microenvironmental reprogramming and tumor-derived SPP1 may be a player in tumor evolution. We also developed an online interface called the Single Cell Atlas in liver cancer to help researchers to explore our single cell data set. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank uh, all my colleagues, Ethan, Ethan, especially my mentor, Dr. Sinri Wang. Uh, thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Dr. Ma. A comment from Dr. Zhang. Very nice work by informatically on single cell RNA sequencing. The question is, sorry, I have to go back to the question. The question is how to verify this data experimentally do you have any experience to share with us? Uh, as he means, uh, how to experimentally demonstrate the hunter, tumor heterogeneity and the patient outcome? Yes, I think so. How to verify this data? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a very nice question. And I think this is definitely something we need to do. So, all our analysis is based on computational modeling of how tumor cell uh, biodiversity is linked to patient outcome. But we found that VGFA and SPP1 is associated with either high, high biodiversity or high uh, clonality. We also did some fu uh, functional validation of the role of, uh, for example, SPP1 in tumor tumor uh, uh, evolution, and we did some experiment about the cell lines and uh, to see how SPP1 can promote uh, SNS structure uh, in HCC cell lines. So this is definitely a very interesting question. I think we will explore this uh, research question further. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And given the time, we have finished our session one and